peekaboo. Hi friends. I have to tell you, at the beginning of this story, it's a little sad, but it gets better. The title of this book is Scrawny Cat. This book was written by Phyllis Root. It's illustrated by Allison Friend. And the word scrawny, in case you don't know, means very, very thin. He's very thin because he's hungry. And look at that sad face. Oh dear. This book was published by Candlewick Press. A scrawny cat crept down the street. He was lonely. He was little. He was lost. He had belonged to someone once and she had belonged to him. Someone who picked him up and scratched his ears and let him lick her chin. Someone who knew his name. Now everyone called him, get out of here. But the scrawny cat knew his name was not get out of here. The wind hurried the scrawny cat along. He hunkered down in a doorway where good smells drifted out. Maybe someone would let him inside and give him something warm to eat. But when the door opened, a man yelled, get out of here. So the scrawny cat bolted down the street, straight into a big dog. Grrr, growled the dog. The skittery, scrawny cat raced away all the way to the dock. Grrr, growled the big dog right behind. What else could the scared little scrawny cat do? He leaped into the dinghy just as kaboom! Rain pummeled down. The big dog ran away. The scrawny cat huddled under the dinghy seat. Up and down, up and down, the dinghy rocked on the waves, just the way someone used to rock the scrawny cat in a chair. The tuckered out scrawny cat put his head on his paws and fell asleep. The wind blew, the waves crashed, the rope tying the dinghy to the dock snapped. When the scrawny cat woke up, all he could see was water, water everywhere. Poor shivery scrawny cat. He lapped the rainwater in the bottom of the dinghy and wished his stomach didn't chew so on his ribs. At last, the sun came up, golden across the waves. Up ahead, just where the boat was headed, the scrawny cat saw a rock and a tree and a house on the sand. A woman came out of the house. She had been a sailor once, but her ship had crashed on the rocks. She had built a little house for herself and settled down to catch fish and gather seaweed and pick berries. But sometimes she missed sailing the open sea and all by herself, she got a little lonely. Now she came down to the shore to see what the storm had blown in. The scrawny cat hunched down under the dinghy seat. Would the woman throw things at him and call him, get out of here? The dinghy grated on the sand. The woman reached down and picked the scrawny cat up. How did you get way out here all by yourself? The woman said, you must be quite the sailor cat. The woman took the scrawny cat inside her house. She rubbed him dry with a towel and put a bowl of fish stew on the floor. The scrawny cat lapped up the stew until his stomach was round and full. The woman picked him up again. Would she throw him out the door? 
not at all. She sat in the rocking chair and scratched the scrawny cat's ears. I've been wanting some company, the woman said, and here you come, sailing in like a regular skipper. The scrawny cat purred. Skipper, that's what I'll call you, the woman said. I'm Emma. Skipper purred even harder and licked Emma under her chin. If you are lucky enough to go sailing someday far out to sea, you might see them together, Skipper and Emma. Skipper isn't scrawny anymore. He's a real sailor cat now. But best of all, Skipper belongs to Emma and Emma belongs to Skipper. Phew, I'm so glad Skipper found a home and I'm glad he doesn't have to be scrawny anymore and he knows his name is not get out of here. He's Skipper. Goodbye, friends. Mwah.